I'm Evelyn Warner, and my life as I knew it came crashing down on a Thursday evening. Richard, my husband of 15 years, walked through our front door, not alone, but with a young woman clinging to his arm. Her name was Clara, barely 23, with a smirk that seemed out of place in our family home. Without hesitation, Richard dropped the bombshell. I'm divorcing you, Evelyn. Clara will be living here now. This house is hers, he declared, his voice devoid of the warmth I had known. My heart pounded in my chest, disbelief and confusion swirling within me. I had heard of such stories, but never imagined I would be the protagonist in this cruel plot. The calmness that enveloped me was more out of shock than composure. You can't be serious, I managed to say, my voice barely above a whisper. Richard laughed, a sound that now seemed foreign to me. Oh, I am very serious. It's been a long time coming. You just never saw it. Clara, leaning against him, looked me over with an air of triumph. He's tired of you, Evelyn. It's obvious, she said. The scene felt surreal, like a bad dream, but the coldness in Richard's eyes was real, too real. The man I had shared my life with, the father of our child, was a stranger to me now. So this is it. You're throwing away our marriage, our family, for her? I asked, my voice tinged with a bitterness I didn't know I possessed. Family, please don't be so dramatic. It's not like we were happy. And yes, for Clara. She understands me, unlike you, he retorted. I felt the sting of his words, each one a betrayal. But amidst the pain, a sense of clarity began to take hold. Richard was showing his true colors, and they were ugly and callous. You're willing to destroy everything for a fling. I questioned, my voice steadier now. Fling? Oh, Evelyn, it's much more than that. Clara is my future, and you. You're just the past, Richard said dismissively. I looked at Clara, a girl young enough to be our daughter, entwined in what she believed was love. But I saw it for what it was, a midlife crisis, a cruel game. Fine, I said, the shock giving way to resolve. You want a divorce? You'll get it. But remember, Richard, this house, it's as much mine as it is yours, and I won't go down without a fight. As they walked past me, I felt a shiver of disgust, not just at the sight of them together, but at the realization of how blind I had been. But this was not the end. It was a beginning. A beginning of my fight for my dignity, for my child, for what was rightfully mine. The following days were a blur of emotions for me. My mind raced with memories of our life together, each now tainted by the revelation of Richard's betrayal. I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, my thoughts consumed by images of him with Clara, their laughter echoing in my ears. But amidst the turmoil, a plan began to take shape. I wouldn't let Richard walk away unscathed. This wasn't just about a house or a marriage. It was about justice. I was going to make him regret his decision, regret ever thinking he could discard me like yesterday's newspaper. I sought the best divorce lawyer in town, someone known for their ruthless efficiency. As I explained my situation, the lawyer, Miss Johnson, listened intently, her eyes sharpening with each detail. Richard thinks he can just replace you and walk away with everything. Not on my watch, she said, her tone laced with determination. We pored over the legalities, and it became clear that he had underestimated me. The house, which he so arrogantly promised to Clara, was partly mine by law, and the land it stood on was inherited from my father solely in my name. Richard had no claim to it whatsoever. Armed with this information, I felt a surge of power. 
For the first time since Richard's betrayal, I felt in control. I was going to turn the tables on him, and he wouldn't even see it coming. Miss Johnson drafted the divorce papers with precision, ensuring my rights were front and center. But it wasn't just about the legal battle. It was personal. Richard had wounded me deeply, and I was going to return the favor. I couldn't wait to see the look on his face when he realized the house he planned to give to his mistress was not his to give. The thought brought a small, satisfied smile to my lips. But this was just the beginning. I was going to hit Richard where it hurt the most. His ego, his pride, his wallet. Nothing was off limits. He had started this war, but I was going to finish it. As I signed the divorce papers, I felt a mix of sadness and resolve. The life I had known was over, but a new chapter was beginning. A chapter where I was the author, and Richard was merely a cautionary tale in the story of my life. The day I filed the divorce papers was a turning point. My heart raced with a cocktail of fear and exhilaration as I handed over the documents. This was it, the point of no return. But as I walked out of the courthouse, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I was no longer the victim in Richard's cruel play. I was now the protagonist in my own story of justice. Later, I met with Miss Johnson to discuss our next move. We sat in her office, the afternoon sun casting long shadows on the floor, plotting the downfall of the man I once loved. Richard's going to fight dirty? Evelyn, you need to be prepared for that. Miss Johnson warned, her eyes serious. I know, I replied, stealing myself, but I have something he doesn't know about, the land this house is on. It's mine, inherited from my father. Miss Johnson's eyes lit up. That changes everything. He can't claim the house without the land. We can serve him an eviction notice. The idea of Richard and Clara receiving an eviction notice from the home they thought was theirs brought a bitter sense of satisfaction. It was more than just a legal move. It was a statement. I was not going to be discarded and forgotten, I said firmly the day the eviction notice was delivered. I imagined the shock and anger on Richard's face. This was just the beginning of his karma. For every tear I shed, for every sleepless night, he would pay. But the battle was far from over. Richard, fueled by his ego, wouldn't go down without a fight. He called me, his voice a mixture of disbelief and fury. Evelyn, what the hell do you think you're doing with this eviction notice? He barked. Just reclaiming what's mine, Richard. You should have thought twice before deciding to give away something that wasn't yours. I replied, my voice calm but firm. This is ridiculous. You're doing this to get back at me, aren't you? He accused. It's not about revenge, Richard. It's about justice. You can't just take what you want without consequences. I countered. Richard was silent for a moment, and I could almost hear the wheels turning in his head. He had underestimated me, thinking I would quietly retreat. But I was fighting back, and I wasn't going to stop until I had what was rightfully mine. This isn't over, Evelyn. I'll fight this, he finally said. Go ahead. I responded, but remember, the law is on my side, and I'm not backing down. After hanging up, I felt a surge of power. For too long... I had let Richard dictate our lives, but now the tables were turned. I was in control, and I would not relent until justice was served. The weeks that followed were a chess game of legal maneuvers and emotional confrontations. Richard, caught off guard by the eviction notice, launched into a series of desperate attempts to sway the situation in his favor. But with each move, he only entangled himself further into the web of his own making. One evening as I sat in my living room, the phone rang. The caller ID flashed Richard's name, and I braced myself for another round of his pleading and anger. Evelyn, you can't do this to me. To us. 
Richard's voice came through, tinged with frustration. Us? There's no us. Any more Richard. You made sure of that, I replied, my voice steady. This is madness. You're going to leave me homeless over some petty revenge, he'd argued. Petty? You call destroying our family petty. I shot back. This isn't about revenge, Richard. It's about consequences. Your actions have them, and now you're facing them. Richard's voice turned softer, almost pleading. Evelyn, please, let's talk about this. We can sort it out for old time's sake. I almost laughed. Old time's sake, as if our years together were mere tokens to be traded in times of trouble. There's nothing left to sort out, Richard. You made your choices, now you live with them. I said, cutting him off. He was silent for a moment, and I could sense his desperation mounting. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Seeing me suffer, he said. It's not about enjoyment, Richard. It's about justice. You need to understand that every action has a consequence, and this, I paused, this is yours. I hung up before he could respond. My heart was racing, but there was a sense of empowerment in standing my ground. For too long, I had let Richard dictate the terms of our life, but now the balance had shifted. I was no longer the passive wife he thought he could easily discard. In the following days, the reality of his situation seemed to dawn on Richard. His calls became less frequent, his voice less assured. The man who had once held all the power in our relationship was now scrambling to salvage what little he could from the ruins he had created. And Clara, her presence in the background of this drama was a constant reminder of the catalyst for all of this. But I knew her part in Richard's story was coming to an end. She was just another pawn in his game, and soon she would realize it too. I lay awake at night, the silence of the house a stark contrast to the chaos of my thoughts. But amidst the turmoil, there was a growing sense of clarity. I was doing the right thing, not just for me, but for our child. In this battle of wills, I was not just fighting for my rights, I was fighting for our future. As the legal battle intensified, Richard's veneer of control began to crack. The house he had intended to give Clara was slipping through his fingers, and with it, his imagined future. His desperation became more evident with each passing day. One afternoon, as I reviewed some documents for Miss Johnson, my phone buzzed with a message from Richard. It was an invitation, or rather a plea, for a meeting. Against my better judgment, I agreed. It was time to face him, not as his wife, but as the architect of his downfall. We met at a quiet cafe, a neutral ground amidst our war. Richard looked haggard, the strain of the situation etching deep lines on his face. As he saw me, his expression shifted from relief to something darker. Evelyn, thank you for coming. We need to sort this out, he started, his voice shaky. Sort this out. You mean find a way for you to weasel out of the consequences? I replied coldly. He leaned forward, his eyes searching mine. I know I've made mistakes, but this, this is too much. You're taking everything from me, everything. No, Richard, I'm taking back what's mine. You made your choice when you decided to betray our family. Now I'm making mine, I said firmly. Richard's frustration boiled over. You're heartless. Do you enjoy seeing me like this? Struggling, begging. I met his gaze unflinching. Heartless. You dare call me heartless after what you've done. This isn't about enjoyment, Richard. It's about justice. You can beg all you want, but it changes nothing. He slumped back in his chair, defeated. So what, you're going to leave me homeless, ruin me? If that's what it takes for you to understand the gravity of your actions, then yes, I said. You thought you could discard me without any repercussions. You were wrong. 
Richard looked away, the reality of his situation finally dawning on him. What about Clara? He asked, almost as an afterthought. Clara, she's your concern, not mine. Though I doubt she'll stick around once she realizes there's nothing left for her here. I replied as I stood up to leave. Richard reached out, a last-ditch effort to salvage something from the wreckage. Evelyn, please. I pulled away. Save your please, Richard. It's too late for that. You've made your bed. Now you lie in it. Walking away from that cafe, I felt a surge of liberation. The chains of our marriage, once so constrictive, were now broken. I was free from Richard's betrayal, free to rebuild my life on my terms. In the wake of our meeting, Richard's attempts to sway the situation became increasingly frantic and futile. His calls, once demanding and arrogant, were now laced with desperation. The tables had turned, and he was slowly coming to terms with the magnitude of his mistakes. One evening, as I was preparing dinner, my phone rang. The familiar jingle brought an involuntary sigh. It was Richard again. Bracing myself, I answered, Evelyn, you can't do this. We can talk about this. There has to be another way. Richard pleaded, his voice cracking. Another way? After everything you've done, you think there's a way out for you. I responded, my voice laced with incredulity. It's not just about me. Think about our child, Evelyn. This affects them too, he argued, playing what he thought was his trump card. Our child. The same child you so easily dismissed in your plans with Clara? No, Richard. This is about justice. This is about making sure our child knows that actions have consequences, I retorted. There was a pause on the other end, a silence filled with unspoken realizations. Richard had always underestimated me, but no longer. I was no longer the woman he thought he could control and manipulate. You're going to regret this, Evelyn. You're pushing me too far, Richard said his voice a mixture of anger and fear. Regret? The only regret I have is not seeing your true colors sooner. You're not being pushed too far. You're just finally being held accountable. I shot back. Richard's frustration boiled over. You think you've won, don't you? You think you can just take everything and leave me with nothing. This isn't about winning or losing, Richard. It's about righting a wrong. You made your choices, and now you live with the consequences. It's that simple, I replied firmly. The call ended with Richard's defeated silence, a stark contrast to his usual bluster. He was finally feeling the weight of his actions, the cost of his betrayal. In the following weeks, the reality of Richard's situation became increasingly apparent. His financial resources dwindled, strained by legal fees and the loss of the house. Clara, ever the opportunist, began to distance herself, her affection waning as Richard's fortunes declined. The final court hearing was a formality, a legal stamp on what was already a foregone conclusion. As I stood outside the courthouse, the decree in hand, I felt an overwhelming sense of closure. Richard's downfall was complete, a direct result of his own actions. The months following the divorce and Richard's eviction from the house brought profound changes. Our home, once tainted by the shadow of betrayal, slowly transformed back into a sanctuary of peace and strength for me and our child. Each room was cleansed of Richard's presence, his memories replaced by new, joyful ones. Richard's downfall continued in a downward spiral, Without the house and struggling financially, he was forced to move back in with his parents. The last I heard, Clara had left him, her affections as transient as the wealth she had hoped to secure. One day, as I tended to the garden, a task that had become a source of solace, my phone rang. The screen flashed Richard's name, 
a reminder of a chapter I had firmly closed. Curiosity piqued, I answered. Evelyn, it's Richard. His voice came through subdued and almost unrecognizable. What do you want, Richard? I asked, my tone indifferent. I, I wanted to apologize for everything, he said, the words seemingly difficult for him to utter. Apologies don't change the past. Richard, they don't undo the hurt, I replied calmly. I know, be admitted. I've lost everything, Evelyn. Clara's gone. I'm living with my parents. I've hit rock bottom. That was your doing, Richard. You made those choices, I stated plainly. There was a heavy sigh on the other end. I know. I just... I thought you should know. I regret it, Evelyn. I regret it all. His words laden with remorse. His apology didn't bring me the satisfaction I had once thought it would. Instead, there was a sense of finality, a closing of a chapter that had caused so much pain. Your regret is your own to live with, Richard. I've moved on. I suggest you do the same, I said, ready to end the conversation. Evelyn. I, he started, but trailed off. There's nothing more to say, Richard. Goodbye, I said and hung up. As I put my phone away and turned back to my garden, a sense of peace washed over me. The past was behind me, and ahead was a life filled with possibilities, a life of my own making. The garden bloomed around me, a testament to new beginnings and growth. Our child laughed in the background, a sound that filled my heart with joy. This was my world now, one where betrayal and pain had no place. Richard's chapter in my life was over, but mine was just beginning. A chapter filled with strength, resilience, and the love of those who truly mattered.